So this is a different task, but what's happening here, ignore this part right here, is that the chimp has to pull up a door, and then the human can reach in. This is a net again. And the human can reach through and get some food here. And you're going to see they're going to succeed in the end. But the question is, when the human is not playing her part, what does the chimp do? Does she try to re-engage this or by, some kind of, uh, by doing some kind of communication or getting her back in? Clearly not a child. And she comes around. She doesn't try to get her back in. She moves her out of the way to try to reach through because she's not doing her part. So we don't try to re-engage her in the task. I try to see if I can reach it myself. Now she's signaling she's ready to go. And sure enough, okay, succeed. Now you may say, well, wait a minute. That's a human. Why should she collaborate with human and try to? Well, OK, we did it with two chimps, actually. And uh, guess what happened at the end? When one of them reached through and grabbed it like this, he didn't hold it up and do like this, like the human did. The one who got it ate it. All right. So what's the point of being in this role? Okay, collaboration breaks down because the one doing this is in the sucker role, uh, doing all the work and getting none of the reward. So uh, you'll see that again in a minute. Um, uh, this is so. This is all still in the topic of commitment to a joint goal. So I'd said this is they expect the other one to be committed. Now this is the child showing her own commitment, as they have to they have to lift this up together. They this is um, uh, two things, and they each have a toy in it that they get to play this fun game with, and this is a, a stick that they have to lift up the stairs together. And the trick is this little girl is going to get her reward first, and then this little girl is stuck because her hole on that side is closed, and they and so this girl has to be altruistic to help her all the way up to the top, uh, even though she's already got her reward. They're having a little trouble here, but they can. Right, but now she has her reward, and she could leave now and go play the game. You'll see the game later. Now this poor little girl is uh, asking for help. She comes around to assess the situation. She sees the problem, and while she still has her game thing in her hand, she helps her up to the top. And now they both get to play their game. Okay, so you're collaborating toward a joint goal. You get your reward first. Then do you delay cashing in your reward and help the other guy? We've done this with chimps as well, and I can tell you that once the chimp gets a reward, game over. Okay, that's it. The other guys just sit there holding the bag, as they say. Um, uh, okay, so that's about uh, um, commitment. Now, uh, another version of this that I alluded to before with, that, um, with, the, with, with, the, uh, with the previous task is sharing the spoils at the end. And we actually think that this is, um, evolutionarily, this is the key constraint on chimps. So you're going to see the chimps do some incredibly uh, sophisticated things cognitively here. So in this task, they have to pull the rope in together um, to get the food. And uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see a chimp come in here, and there's no partner. Now, she's had some training to know that she needs a partner. That is, she's had, uh, she's had uh, um, some experience pulling the rope. And the reason you need two is because the rope is threaded through here. So if you pull it by yourself, it comes out. You need somebody on the other side pulling equally for it to work. So the chimp already knows this before this task starts. But there's nobody here, and she's going to go get a partner, because she knows she needs a partner. And they needed basically no training in this. Once they know they needed a partner, they ended up opening the door for the partner. So what will the chimpanzee okay. do? Sorry, this is a TV thing. Has some kind of hope he realizes he can't do it on his own. She goes and opens the door. The peg to release the other chimp. OK, now the trick here is that we have separated the food already. So the food is on the two ends of the board. All right, so now they do great. They pull, the rope together. they pull it in, they both get their reward, and you think, wow, they're really good at this. Okay. In this situation, but the chimpanzees help now each we're other. going to put the food in the middle. We're going to pile the food in the middle. So now they have the Will problem the of dividing the spoils. Each other what are they going to do? She goes and gets the partner. She's the dominant one, by the way, even though they're young. And both hold the rope. And, one and you see, this one, this one pulled kind of half-heartedly, right? She pulled half-heartedly because she knew what was going to happen. And on the next trial, she stops altogether. 
right? Again, it's the sucker, okay? If I'm not gonna get anything about it, out of it, what's the point? So they, they haven't solved the problem of how to divide up the spoils at the end, and so they might get a collaboration here or there, but it can't be long-term sustained if everybody's not satisfied with the result, right? And this is because their natural foraging tendency is everybody goes and gets stuff. That's the natural foraging tendency of pretty much every, not, not every, but the vast, vast majority of animals uh, on the planet is everybody goes and scrambles for their own food, or there's some kind of dominance thing where the dominants get what they want. Uh, but collaboration and sharing, there are examples. I'm not saying they're not, but they're, they're rare. Here's children in this task. I'm going to show you two videos. And um, uh, this is one where I picked it because one of the little boys acts kind of like the dominant chimp. So this is the food piled in the middle. They have their little buckets there because they have to take the, the, and they're gummy bears in the middle. Okay. And they're going to pull in here. And I chose this one because this little boy does what the chimp does, right? He comes over and the other boy lays back a little bit. There are four gummy bears in there. And now he's, he, he's only taking one at the moment. You can't see this very well. He's there. The other kid looks over here and says, he says, there's nothing in mine over here. He comes over and actually there's still three of them there. He starts to take all three. This boy says no. Okay. And then he just takes two. There's one left and he takes it. So they each end up with two. So not only do they divide it equally, they trust that they can, okay? And the first one, uh, okay, so the first, the first little boy um, uh, knows that he should just take two, and this little boy uh, trusts that he can come over and get his share. Now here are two little girls, and um, uh, one of them takes three, and you'll see what happens. So they pull too hard, they pull too hard, and they go down on the floor. These are all three-year-olds, young three-year-olds. They go on the floor. This little girl takes three. The little girl. But then she puts down one. Okay? Now, these challenges occur only, this is important, they only occur when the kid takes more than two. If the kid takes two, there's no challenge. Everybody's happy. But if the kid takes more than two, then usually the other kid will challenge, and usually the first one will give it up and put it, put it down. Them. So there is a sense of equity, and as John and, and Judy know, uh, this, is, uh, this is a younger age than normally has been seen in this kind of sharing, e equity sharing, and it's because it's a special situation. The equity sharing has normally been studied when you give the kid a windfall of stuff and say divide it up. Well, they're, not very, they're pretty selfish when they do that. But in a situation where the two of us are together, approaching something that we produce together, they share more often. And this comes out especially clearly, you haven't seen this one, uh, John, this is the study I haven't sent you. Uh, and so this is one um, where we rig this so that right, we actually have three conditions here. This is the collaboration condition. There are four little toys here. They're, they're balls that they love playing this game where they get these, these marbles. And, they, and you heard it before. They send it down the chute and it goes, Bring! and they, they, I don't know why, but they really love it. It's very motivating. So anyway, there are four of them here. And they're going to pull this thing together, and you're going to see that three of them go on this side and one goes on this side. And they didn't anticipate this. They, they've seen how this works in a general way, but they've never seen an unequal distribution. So this is their first experience with the unequal distribution, and you can see what happens. And this child, even though he's got all three in hand, just hands it over. And they do this on about 80 to 85% of the trials. Three-year-olds do this. Now we have what we call a windfall condition, where they walk in the room, and this kid's are, they're already three down here and one down here. They share about 5% of the time, okay? Almost never. It's the windfall. It's already like that. Maybe they think the world is like that. Maybe they think the adults set it up like that. I'm not sure what their thinking is, but they don't just hand one over when they've got it in their grasp. But they do if they produced it together. For the, for the control condition freaks among you, we also had a third, another, a third condition where they worked individually and produced three and one side by side, so it also had working together, uh, but they didn't produce the result together, and that was in between, but still significantly lower than the collaboration condition.